So to read a file, I'm going to just bring this back over here. To read a file, uh, I'm going to rename this source destination. I think maybe that's a little more clear. So we can say source file colon equal os dot open and give it the source file name. Okay. But remember, it returns an error. So. Error was a nil. We will write that out and then we'll defer the close. We're going to always to defer the close. And then we want to read that file. So we're going to do this IUTIL.read all, which reads the whole file. Okay, and then if the error is not nil, Error reading source file. Okay, so now we have the slice of bytes of the file. Okay, and now we just need to write them. To do that, we say destination file, error, os.create, a destination file name, there's not nil. Error. error creating destination file. Now we just need to write it, and the way we can do that is by saying that right and handling it the slice of bytes. Okay? So just need to check that error. Always got to check your errors. Uh, error writing destination file. Okay? So this should copy a file. So the way we test that is we go over here, go to my-cp, and out of here we go to install. Okay, now I gotta create a file, so I'm just going to create a file. So if I look at hello text here, it's hello world. I wanna copy that into hello2.txt, uh, so I'm gonna say my-cp, hello text to hello 2.txt, okay? So now I have hello 2, and I can cat it to see what is inside of it, and there we go. Make sense? So we made a program which copies files. So we made CP, which is really easy. Uh, and that, hopefully you can start to see the, the power of the language here that it made something uh, like this so easy to do. Okay. So what are some uh, some issues with this program? Just sort of do our, yeah? The other file you had on the right, that was just basically showing what CP does. This is what the other file on the right was. I just oh, added in the code to read sorry. and write the file. Got it, got it. So we'll uh, sort of do our, our code review here. Uh, what are some issues with this program? Yeah? Oh, good point. So a lot of these programs had failed when we, uh, you know, we've done this and we like left one out. Yeah, that's not very good. We, we would rather check that. So the way we can do that is we can say if ours is uh, less than two, you know, we can say something like usage my-cp uh, source destination, something like that just to tell the user, instead of getting this crazy error, um, they get this nice, clean, whatever you want. So that's a much better error message. It tells your user what they did wrong. Um, other issues? I'll, I'll give you a hint on one. Uh, remember how I said that main, your main function should generally be kind of small? This is not that small. We should have made a function, right? It's a great place to make a function. We'll call it copy, source, file, name, 
destination file name. They're both strings. And what we're going to do is make it return an error. Okay? And we'll just copy all of this code, put it in there. And instead of this, we're just going to return the error. I'll show you later how to make more descriptive errors. Actually, we, we, we can do it now, actually. I'll just go ahead and show you. So you can say return format.errorf. sure what that would buy us. Uh, so I'm just I'm just creating these errors. So I'm turning the logs into this format.errorf and that creates an error with a string. And notice our formatting we saw before with printf, same kind of formatting here. I'm just using present v. That's just going to make it so that the this is like our error message and this is the error message we get from the operating system. Um, so I'm just changing our logs into this. It makes our code a little more flexible because, you know, now people who use this function, they can do whatever they want with the error. They don't have to print it out. And then we just say return error at the end, well, or nil. Okay, so now we can say uh, error colon equal copy source file name destination. And then we say if error is not nil, we just log it. Okay, so that's a lot cleaner. Uh, and now if we want to do a copy again, we can reuse it somewhere else. Okay, I called it CP just because it matches the name of the file. I don't know if the program is right. Maybe it's just the same. You could call it the full name. That'd be fun too. Um, are there issues with this program? Okay, so there's a, maybe, maybe I can demonstrate one of the issues with this program. Um, well, I, uh, so, the issue with this program is it reads the entire file into memory, right? I do this, I like to read all. So say I'm copying um, a multi-gigabyte file. Say it's 100 gigs. Some of these videos we've been making are probably pretty big, right? So say you have a 100 gig movie file or something, and you want to copy it from one place to another. With this program, you can't do that because it has to load the entire file into memory, and you don't have 100 gigs of RAM. Okay. So that's the downside of this program, is that this is read on memory. So let's see a way we can do this that is better. Okay. <coughs> and that's we can use copy. And this actually is going to make our program shorter too, which is kind of funny. Alright, so in I.O., if we go to go.org slash I.O. There are a bunch of helper functions for using I.O. And this is where the reader and writer are defined, right? So here's writer. I didn't talk about write, but notice we were using the dot write method. That's what this is. So it means that files are both readers and writers. You can read from files and you can write to them. But we saw reader. Uh, and so there's other interfaces in here too, like C. Uh, it, with a file, you can move from the front to somewhere else inside of it and then start reading. Uh, which is, would be more efficient. You wouldn't have to like read all your way to it. But one of the things we can do in here is copy. So there's this function called copy. Copy copies from source to destination until either end of file is reached or on source or an error occurs. It returns the number of bytes copied and the first error encountered while copying, if any. So instead of writing read all this data into a slice of bytes and then write it all to the file, we can just copy from the input file to the output file using io.copy. Okay? So this is actually going to make our program shorter. Before you get rid of this code, can you copy that into the scratch? Please? Yeah. And I'll just I'll call this slow copy. memory heavy copy. <laughs> um, okay, 
So I have my two files. What I'm going to do is going to first I'm going to move this up, okay? So that we just open the files first. So now we have our two files. And notice the value of defer here. It doesn't matter where what else I do after this. I can guarantee that I'm going to close both files. Okay? I don't have to worry about it. Um, for example, you know, like these returning the errors. I, I know that it's going to close the source file if I return an error here. And then from this point on, I know if I return an error like right here, it's going to close this file too. Okay? I don't have to have Otherwise, you'd have a lot of deeply nested code. Um, okay, and then I can just say io.copy. And notice the subtlety here in the it's destination source, not source destination. So make sure the destination is on the. Yeah. Uh, and we put the destination file and the source file. Okay, what does it return? It returns the number of bytes we wrote and an error. So we don't care about the number of bytes we wrote, so we're just going to put underscore the error, and then we're just going to return the, uh, well, we'll do it the same way. So I can get rid of all this code and get down to here. Okay? Uh, this should be it. Okay. So this program does the same thing the other one does, except it doesn't have to read the whole file in every the way it works is it, is it sort of pulls a chunk out of the, the source file and then writes it to the destination file. And then pulls a chunk out of the source file and writes it to the destination file. So it uses a small amount of memory and copies the entire file. Okay? So it's, it's a lot more efficient. Um, and, but it's actually less code, too. Right? That's the other surprising thing. So we made a better program using less code. That's the power of the reader-writer interface and the I.O. program, the functions in Go, right? This I.O. copy is actually easier to understand than what we were doing down here, okay? Everybody following this code? And it reads nice, too, right? I open my file, I open my destination, and then I copy into my destination my source. And then I'm done, okay? So let's see if that actually worked. Install. Well, let me change hello text so we can prove it did something. Wait, that's the wrong folder. So I'm going to change to hello world 2 and run copy. And now if we look at hello 2 that text, hello world 2. So it, it works. It copies files. Um, any questions about copy? Copy that one up in the scratch too, the bottom or Okay. So we've seen copy. Um, let me go back to our original uh, file example. Remember how we had that, uh, we were reading from a string reader? Remember that? Mm -hmm. So I can say RDR for reader, strings.newReader, and I give it a string. And remember how I said this was a reader? So we can do something really interesting here. I can take the uh, this copy function. Well, actually, I just want this bit here. Okay. So I open this file. Um, we'll just do one for now. And instead of reading from the file. Um, I can read from a string. So another way to implement the write that we did before was I can say io.copy the destination file and reader. Okay? That's kind of interesting, right? So instead of saying desfile.write, um, 
hello world. I can say I have a copy yes file and give it this reader. Okay, so these two things are equivalent, kind of. But remember, I, this is not a string. I have to convert it into a slice of bytes. So these two things are kind of equivalent. Okay. I just want to show you that so that you can see there's this relationship of, well, I can do it this way with the data, or I can do it this way using readers and writers. So sometimes in Go packages, you'll see something that thinks a reader. And just know that, yeah, that could be a file. I can also easily make a reader of strings. So I can pass a string to that function if I just wrap it in strings in a reader. Okay? So if you see, oh, this takes a reader, you don't have to think, oh, now I've got to create a file and write to that file and save it. You don't have to do that. You can just do this okay? if you have a string available. Uh, it turns out there's a corollary. One second, Caleb. So I'm just wanting to sort of catalog all your code. I'm just sort of realizing the process that will work for that. So before you change this, can you again just copy that, paste it to scratch, replace everything that's there? I'm grabbing that as soon as you paste it, and I'm putting that under my GitHub. I'll organize people have access to these steps, both in here and in the video. So all you got to do is copy this and replace everything on scratch with this. And I'm grabbing that. The whole thing is control A, so I just grab it all and put it in Go file. There's a bytes package, and it has a reader as well. And you can give it a slice of bytes. Okay, it does the same thing as a string, except instead of taking a string, you take a slice of bytes. But it gives you a reader that you can use for things that take readers. Okay, everybody following the idea here? Okay, because remember, in the definition of copy, it takes writers and readers. So anything that implements reader you can pass to copy. All right. I think maybe we should take a little bit of a break.